making history last night by being elected Toronto's next mayor. Congratulations. How does it feel, uh, not only the fact that you're the, you're the first female since amalgamation, the first mayor of colour for the city of Toronto in its history, but also now having this position that you initially were seeking almost 10 years ago and, and now having it. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels great. I am grateful. I'm excited. Grateful to have the opportunity to serve, to work with others, to get things done for people in Toronto. And uh, it's just this sense of responsibility also um, to represent this great city. Also, it's a second chance, as you said. I didn't win last time, uh, so just don't give up and keep pushing. <laughs> and here I am. And here you are. Yeah. Um, Immigrant kid from St. Jamestown, you know, being the mayor-elect. Yeah, um, and you know, we have, looking at your uh, celebration video from last night, quite the big party there uh, last night. Earlier, as the results began to roll in, were you worried at any point? Because initially we saw Anna Bailao with uh, quite the lead and then things started to shift. Was there any worry at any point last night for you? Um, we, we don't know. Um, the poll have closed already. It's no sense worrying. I just know and very grateful for the 2,500 volunteers yesterday that were out in the street making phone calls. We knew at that time that they, they had uh, people that wanted to vote for me have all shown up. So we know we're going to get the numbers uh, that we need to, to hit a certain like 37 percent. But as to how well other people are doing, we can't control it. So, um, yeah. No need but, to worry. Well, there's no sense worrying <laughs> because mm -hmm. whatever happens, happens, right? Yeah. You know, what's really encouraging, though, I had a conversation later on with uh, Anna Bailal and Mark Saunders, um, Josh Matlow and uh, Brad Bradford. They, they were all saying, hey, Olivia, Let's work together. We have a common goal to make the city a better place for everyone, especially Anna. She and I are both from immigrant background. She knows a lot of knowledge uh, as a housing uh, advocate or housing, uh, wanting to develop more affordable housing. So uh, we said, yeah, let's work together. The city clerk's office put out a note saying that it was your request to start as of July 12th. Yes. Once Can't wait do, to start. <laughs> Can't wait to start. But yeah. once you do, what is the first change that you're going to make where Toronto residents will start to feel and see that impact as soon as possible? A lot of people don't want to wait. And it sounds as if in your speech last night, Mark McAllister was referencing this earlier, that you were signaling that this may take some time after 10 years of, of what you call neglect here in the city. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you are going to change right away that yeah, Torontonians yeah, can feel right, ASAP? Yeah. I think so. Uh, I know quite a few nonprofit organizations yeah. uh, ready to build affordable housing. They got the land, they got the plans, they got the funding. It's just the application are stuck at City Hall. I thought, whoa, okay, two years. Um, there's a whole lot of things in the pipeline. Let's just get it going, right? Because we need housing. And you, you heard me talking about housing all the time, right? Making life affordable because the rent is so high. So if people are ready, like all the organizations, whether it's nonprofit or for-profit developers, they're ready to build. Let's just fast track it, get it, get it going, you know, cut any of the red tape that might be there so that they're ready to build. So I, that would be my very fast top priority okay. to get things going. Get things going right away. Lastly, I'm going to go back to that uh, the talk that you had with the Premier last night. You had this conversation. He put out a statement last night congratulating you. But again, in this campaign, he called you an unmitigated disaster. Yeah. How do you then work with this Premier in order to get the funds and the money that Toronto needs in order to fill that, that billion-dollar gap that we're seeing? And me, as I said, it's campaign talk, right? The conversation was great. We, we talked about, I, I said, we spent eight months 
in the 2014 election got to know each other because there were so many debates. Um, and um, we, we, uh, we were, uh, said last night that we're going to seek common ground. We both love this city and really want to see it as successful as possible. And the people have spoken and said, hey, housing, public transit, all of those things are important. And I'm sure the premier, because he's for the people, and would want to get some things done. And I'm sure he wants to work with the city of Toronto, and that's what he said. He, and his uh, cabinet minister, Steve Clark, which is responsible for municipal affairs and housing, also said, hey, let's work together to um, get some housing built. Okay. So we'll wait and see. July 12th is the big day for you, taking over as mayor of Toronto once again. Congratulations, Olivia Chow.